Each M&M in this bowl weighs a slightly different amount. In the first video of this series, Introduction to Statistics, I talked about finding the middle value, the median average weight. But how much difference is there from one M&M to another? Today, we're talking about how to find variance within a data set. Hi, I'm Jen. During the first video in this series, we found that the mean or average weight of an M&M from this sample is 1.72 grams. I'm not going to go into detail about how to calculate that, but I will link to that video if you want to go back and check it out. Then we looked at the frequency distribution of the weights of our M&Ms and found that on the low end, we had one M&M that weighed 1.13 grams and we had one M&M that weighed 2.53 grams. So our range spanned from 1.13 to 2.53. Based on that, we know we have at least one M&M that's 35% less weight than the average M&M in our group. And we have one that weighs 47% more than the average weight of our group of M&Ms. That tells us about the extreme values, but it can be a little misleading when we want to understand what the normal amount of variability is in this entire bowl. Variance is the most free frequently used measure of variability within statistical data. By definition, it's the mean of the squares of the deviation scores. I'll put the formula up on the screen. Let's talk about what that really looks like to calculate it though. That E looking symbol is the summation. It means we're going to add up the values of squaring each of the differences from our mean. So if I take any single data point, I'll say, let's take this 2.53 weight. I'll take 2.53, which is X or a specific sample value and subtract X bar, which is the mean value. And I'll get the difference there. Then I'll square this number. I'll repeat that for each M&M in our set of data until I get 159 different points of how different each M&M is from that mean. Once I get all those values, I'll add them all together. Then I'll divide by N, which is the total number of samples, or 159. There are two ways to calculate this. You can divide by N if you have the entire population, or if you don't and you just have a random sample, you'll divide by N minus one. In this case, we're trying to describe information about the specific bag of M&Ms. I don't wanna look at all M&Ms all together because my sample size really isn't big enough or random enough to truly tell me about every single M&M. So we're going to divide by N. When it comes to variance, the higher the number, the more variability that we have in our data. And the closer to zero it is, that means the closer to the mean or average value each of our data points is. I didn't calculate all of these different data points by hand. Of course I did them in Excel. And when I have them in there, you can calculate them individually and do each of those pieces, or you can use the variance function to be able to find the variance. The same is true in any analytics program that you're working in. There will be some way for you to calculate the variance automatically within the data. Now let's look at how to calculate variance in Excel. We're starting out with the same data set that we've been using throughout this series. I have all 159 data points on M&M weights here in my spreadsheet. I also have my measures of central tendency already calculated from the intro to stats video. I'll put a link to that if you want to know how I calculated those. To find our variance, we subtract each point from the mean, square that value, add all of them together, and then divide by our number of data points. So for our first step, I'm going to make a difference from the mean column. In this column, I'll subtract the weight listed in column B on each line from the mean value in cell I4. I'm fixing this reference and then copying the formula next to all cells with a weight in them. I generally like to use formulas where possible because if I type in a weight wrong on my mean or my data set changes slightly, my values will update automatically. Okay, next step. Now we need to square the differences. I'll make another additional column for the squared differences and multiply C2 by C2 and copy that formula down. 
Under the area where I've listed my measure of tendencies, I'll add a label for the sum of the squared differences, and then I'll sum all of the values in column D using the sum function. Below this, I'll add my number of data points, in this case using the count function to count how many data points I have. I could go ahead and type in 159 here, but again, I prefer to use a formula where possible. Lastly, I'll add my field for variance, and I'll divide the sum of the squared differences by the total number of data points to get my variance value. We could have done the same thing using the function var.p and referencing our total list of weight. We use the formula var.p because we're looking for the variance using data points for all members of our population, in this case, the bag of M&Ms. If this were a representative sample of the entire population of peanut butter M&Ms, we'd use the formula var.s to indicate our data is only a sample. If you're using an older version of Excel or an alternative spreadsheet program, you may not have access to the var.p or .s functions, but you should have a var function that you can reference. In this case, var represents the same thing as var.s, which is going to estimate a slightly higher variance because you're only working with a sample of the population. Next time, we'll look at how to find the standard deviation in our data and exactly what that tells us. Thank you so much for watching.